Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today I'm going to get on the forks on the YL2C, YL2C Yamaha. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build those up. I got the seals in. I was able to find some nice new uh, seals, not some 56-year-old Yamaha uh, NOS ones. I just, I mean, you can use those, but rubber just doesn't last a half century very well. So I much prefer some new, uh, or newer anyway. I, I have no idea when these were made, but a, they are built a little bit like uh, the All Balls Racing one, but I couldn't get them from there. Uh, <clears throat> I had to, I just got them off of eBay from a, uh, seal supplier and I've had real good luck with him uh, been able to get a lot of a lot of different seals from him that I couldn't get from Yamaha or a lot of them that I can get from there and save half the half the price so you just have to do what you uh, you need to do in order to save some money and get this stuff done and get it done so you don't have to do it again so anyhow let me get uh, let me get you over here at the at the vise and we're going to start building one of these tubes up. Okay, one of the first things we need to do is we need to load our fork nut with a new o-ring and a seal. Uh, I've already got the o-ring removed. Here's the new one and you just kind of push it up in there. And it'll get kind of kind of wrinkly in there, for lack of a better word. And you just got to pull it up into the the groove. It is certainly unruly here. I think I'm gaining. I think I'm gaining on it. Okay, there it is. Okay, and we'll put a little grease on that before we put it on. Next thing we want to do is get the seal on. This this is the the new seal, and it uh, it fits here good, and it fits the uh, fork tube. I've already tried it to make sure, and it's exactly the same size as the factory seal. It does not have the uh, metal out here on the outs outside. It is a metal seal. Uh, this is made of metal, but it's coated with rubber, just like the All Balls Racing ones. This really looks a lot like it. It really does. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get set up here in my little dake press, and we'll press that in. First thing I'm going to do to help with that seal installation is just put a little bit of, of a lightweight oil on it just to help it slide in and then we'll we'll get it started as square as we can and then we'll get it over here in the press oops what happened to my little rubber piece oh there it is I like, to, I like to put that little piece of inner tube underneath that just to protect it. And we're just going to push her. And I'm going to get my... Slide my arm up here. Okay. I think that's it. Easy peasy. Okay, now I'm just gonna get a little grease down there on my O-ring. Okay. Now that O-ring, 
when this screws onto here, that's what seals this tube from or right here. Because the, the, the tube has got a positive stop up here at the top and the, the O-ring is going to seal right around here. So we'll put a little grease there too just to facilitate everything. Oh, and one thing you've got to do here is get your screw in the bottom. You don't want to forget that. Your screw and your gasket. Ask me how I remember to do that. <laughs> uh, I was doing one one day, put the oil in, and it was running all right down the, the line here. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get that up here. And we'll get a little on the threads too. Okay, and then we and slide this piece in there and we've got our slider and on that let me get a little fork oil out here and we'll just put a little fork oil on the inside and that piece slides down and goes into the top of the tube just like that. And at that point, we've got our grease on our O-ring and everything. And let me show you something we need to do here. Okay, this right here is a very sharp edge. So you wanna make sure that uh, you protect your seal and your O-ring. So get you a plastic bag that you can put on there and then just, nope, oh, I want to get a little bit of fork oil on my seal also. So we'll just get that right there. And then just kind of work it over that lip. And then just push it on down and screw it down till it stops. All right, that's down to the bottom. I had to kind of lay that over so you could see. And at this point, I'm gonna get my strap wrench and just give this just a little snugging. And if you missed uh, taking this apart, this is how you get them apart too. You really need a strap wrench to do it. This one was very tight, getting it just kind of adjust it until it cams over. Okay, so there we go. Doesn't have to be terrible tight, just, just snug. Then we've got the uh, dust boot. And that's just going to slide down like this. And you've got a spacer shim that the spring sets on right there. Okay, and then we've got uh, 145 cc's of oil, and it probably will go in pretty slow. It likes to bubble and kind of burp back. So far, so good, though.
Okay, looks good. I'm using 20 weight here. There, it's wanting to bubble up now. If I can pull it up, it should pull it in. Yep, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to screw in a bolt here in the top just to keep it from happening, keep it from uh, coming out if that slides back down. And all there's left to do is get our spring on and we'll need to, uh, I'm still waiting on boots, so when those come in then uh, we'll be able to completely assemble the fork. Also, you got to remember you've got a rubber seal that goes in the top. So don't forget that. And like I say, I'm just going to stick a bolt in here so that if that moves down on me, then uh, I won't lose all the oil. Okay. Okay, I had the uh, rims all the way up to the spokes in uh, Metal Rescue all night and actually came out during the night and turned them once and uh, actually it went in like three o'clock yesterday afternoon so this is all pretty much rust free I've just got to kind of clean them up and uh, dry them up and in here I've still got the fender in the uh, metal rescue it's working on just the, the last part of it most of it's pretty well cleaned up so just a couple more hours probably in there and down here. I've got some uh, the aluminum top piece for the triple tree. It's down here kind of polishing up once we get that cleaned up it'll look pretty nice. This does a pretty good job. And what I'm getting ready to do now is uh, nickel plate the shifter. And I've got my nickel out here. This is, uh, it's got the, these are mist balls on top. It keeps, uh, keeps it from misting up. And this is electroless. It, otherwise no electricity needed. And uh, you just heat it up to a, uh, 195 degrees I think it is. I'm just getting ready to put it into my container here and put it on the hot plate and start warming it up. And I've got my hot plate plugged in and we're getting it put on there. Like I say, 195 degrees is what we're shooting for. So we'll let that start cooking. Been putting a little black paint on the skid plate. And I'm getting ready to set my tire uh, changer up so I can put these tires on. Got them yesterday. So we'll get those on. Got the new tubes. This is the rear fender that was in the Metal Rescue most of the day. Uh, there's looking pretty good actually. There was quite a bit of damage here on the end. I think maybe they, they uh, wheelied over backwards maybe and got the tail light and bent that. But most of that will be under the tail light. I didn't even notice it to be quite honest until I started cleaning it up. So I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to do much to that. Now the one thing that I'm going to do is on the, on the paint that I buffed out a couple days ago, I'm going to go ahead and use some car wax on the whole thing. And that way on these uh, bare spots here, it will protect them from rusting again for a while anyway. That's about all you can do. You could use some... Uh, Touch up paint if you like, 
but it would really look splotchy. You just as well, if you're going to touch it up, you just as well go back and strip it and paint it. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll just go ahead and put the uh, paste car wax on and buff it off and that should protect most of it at least for a few years. This is not going to set outside or anything and we're not humid here. Uh, our humidity usually is you know 15 to 20 percent. Uh, sometimes when we get a storm in it'll go up of course but uh, for the most part that's pretty much where we're at. So we're getting things together here. I got the paint on the stuff that we worked on the other day and this is I'm going to buff this up and you want to make it as shiny as you can where you're well everywhere because you're going to put the whole thing in uh, so I'll take it over on the wire wheels first and start buffing it and then use a scotch bright wheel and that way it'll look a lot nicer when it comes out of the nickel And over here I've got the Scotch-Brite wheel. Okay guys, I just got the uh, boots and they look like it's probably going to work okay. It's a, they're a little bit smaller in diameter. Here's your original. But it's got the same appearance here and it locks in. You have to stretch this a little bit. And uh, they're actually uh, just about the same length. This is the piece off of this one. So they'll, they'll stretch a little bit. I think uh, what we need to do, see this here is uh, it's supposed to hook in the, over the top of this. So we're going to have to wait until we get it compressed into the uh, fork, uh, triple tree and then we'll have to work it over the top of this but I think it's going to work let me get the other one up here and we'll I'll show you how I had to put it on okay the ones I ended up here with if anybody else wants to try it is uh, too fast moto it's uh, zero six dash 4022B and uh, these are for the uh, Honda uh, CT90, S90, uh, a lot of the Honda products and I think it fits some other stuff too but it was the only one that I could find that had this uh, boot section here that goes over and gets into the, uh, the groove here that was still pretty much the uh, dimensions I needed. Like I say, there's, it's just more, more than anything, it's smaller and you're gonna have to stretch it. It goes down over the spring fairly well. To there. And then if you can just get a screwdriver underneath it and just kind of work it around to get it over that lip like that and then just pull it down it hooks right into the, the groove and voila I'm, I don't know how this part's going to go up here yet but I know we're going to have to compress it because if we don't uh, when you let go of it it's, it's just going to pop back up out of it so I don't see the point in trying to uh, get it to fit at this point. But it looks better than some of the alternatives out there. Okay, getting ready to get our tire on. Don't forget your ring band. Okay, there's the front one. Okay, we're there. So I'm going to go ahead and 
get my part in there. <clears throat> takes is just to put it in there. There's no wires or anything. The one thing I can tell you about this stuff is to use it in a well ventilated area because it is nasty. Okay, it's been a half hour. That should be enough. To... Yeah. It's got deposit on it. It's not perfect, but it, uh, It'll keep it from rusting. And rinse it off. Distilled water. So there's our plating repair. Okay, just put a little, since I've got my tire solution already out, we'll just put a little of that Ruglide on there. There. There you go. Okay, I just got to looking at this boot again, and you, you can kind of see the top of this one where we need to have, this is actually made for this piece here, which we don't have that luxury, but we, I think, can create what we need by trimming off this part of the boot right here on the top so that this uh, piece here will actually fit into the rib here. That's my hope. So I'm going to pull this back off and I'm going to trim this and you know if it doesn't work then I'm out 20 bucks for or 16 whatever it was for these things but uh, I these boots are just a tad longer these here are so I think that will be just fine by doing that so let me go ahead and See if I can get this back off. Oh yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do just, just kind of trim part of this top off. These had a provision in the top piece there, I'll show you in a minute, for kind of doing what we're trying to do, but I just don't think it would work for us. See, it has this ridge built in it here, but these are built, you know, this is more of what we want. And now, I believe that we'll be able to get this piece to go in there. With a little coercion, probably. There. Okay. So just like that. And that's, that's what I envisioned. 
and uh, of course we've got uh, this piece here goes first and let me grab the other parts real quick okay I believe this is how it looks assembled of course your triple tree goes right in here and then this piece goes on and then you've got the little rubber uh, grommet there and then this piece goes on and then your headlight ear goes into this so I've either screwed it up or it, or it will work one or the other I think it's going to be okay all right I've got the the rear tire wheel assembled here and I've got this I've actually got this pulled up with some wire in two places here because it wants to fall out it's a little heavier with this extra sprocket on here so I'm going to do like I always do I'm going to build up from the rear tire forward and first thing we need to do is get the swing arm on and I've got I think everything here uh, to do so so we'll get that on then we'll set the frame up and then we'll hook the swing arm onto the frame I'm trying to figure out the best place to get you here and I think maybe this way I'm gonna have to move some stuff so and I've just uh, again what I did on all the painted parts was I just used some turtle wax on the uh, the painted parts so that we'll kind of keep the the rust from wanting to form again on the bare metal areas okay I've cleaned up both of the backing plates and uh, I'll just have to put the actuator levers back on when I get them so I know what position to get them in on the other side all we're doing is uh, we're installing this and the spacer and then we'll uh, shove the the axle through uh, this here part you know I may have to put that in this swing arm first let me see what we what we're up against here okay head back up again here we've got to get the brake plate in first and then we can get this back on you know it always works when you're doing it uh, on the bike but doesn't always want to do it when you're doing something just a little bit different and I'll just get a little grease on the axle helps get it in there plus it uh, keeps that from wanting to rust so we've got our adjuster on we can get our spacer in there okay here all right did I miss anything and just get a little grease in there Put a little on the bolt too. What did I do with the bolt? There it is. I was just looking the uh, the bushings. These bushings are good. I I think it feels really tight, but these bushings are still available from Yamaha. If you uh, if you need them, I don't know, like eight bucks or something like that. I've just got the machine kind of tied down here in the back so it can't fold forward until I get the bolt in and it should be relatively secure we've got the 
protector. I believe it goes like this. It's got to go on there. Just like that and this should be relatively secure at this point point. and of course on the other side we've got the exhaust pipe goes on there and uh, seems like there's something else that hangs on that too okay Next thing we need to do is get our uh, adapter on up here. Yeah, I'm going to put just a little bit of oil on that. Let me grab some. Yeah, we'll just put it right there on that. And then we've got the shock, one for both sides here. I'm going to go ahead and take my strap off. Hopefully it won't go anywhere. And this is the big eyelet over here. We've got a washer that goes up right there. And we've got a, I think it's this one, it goes there, and our nut. And I'm going to leave that loose until I get this up here. Now I guess I'm chasing shock rubbers today. All right. And a washer and an acorn nut. Okay, we'll just leave that loose while we get the other side. Of course, this is the one that's got the clevis on one end and the smaller hole there. So I think we need to get it uh, over the clevis first. And we've got just a bolt, no washer. And we've got a, let's see, washer that goes on there. You seeing that? Uh, or, um, and our rubber. And then get the shock on there. And the other rubber. And a washer, a lock washer, and the extended nut. Okay, so I guess we've got all the hardware in there that we need. And the 14 millimeter down here. And the rest of the shock bolts are 17s. seems like there ought to be a lock nut there but let me check the IPB real quick well it's getting one so I don't know whether it had one before or, but it looks like it in the IPB so the two upper ones have a flat and lock and the lower ones uh, you get you get the bolt on one side without any locking feature and the uh, I'm assuming the same on the other side. So 
We'll just go with that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the wire off that I put on the sprocket at this point. I got one piece right here. That was just to make it a little easier for me. Keep, I kept wanting to pop off of there while I'm trying to line everything up. Good tip. Okay. So I think we're good back here so we can probably start on the front end. I've got all this stuff clean, so we'll go ahead and get our grease up in there. And on the top. And I'm getting it on this piece since here's where the bearings are going to go. Okay, I've got the bearings all loaded here. So let me see if I've got all the stuff I need. Looks like it. So we'll go ahead and try to get this up in here without disturbing anything. race on and our, get rid of some of that extra grease there doesn't need to be there and our dust cover and our nut once we get to that point it's uh, we're kind of safe <laughs> If you know what I mean, if you've ever messed with these bearings, you know what I mean. Okay, and then we'll uh, take our little spanner wrench here, tighten her up. And tighten it up just a little more. And then I'm just going to loosen it about an eighth of a turn. There. There, that should be good. Upper triple clamp on there. And we'll just go ahead and get the bolt started in up here. And if you remember right, this is where one of the bolts was, uh, they had the wrong one in. And I've got a new one for both sides here, just so we keep it looking the same. They're uh, 10 millimeter, one, two, five threads, and they're 40 millimeters long. I just went over to the hardware store and picked up a couple. Okay, I think we're ready for our forks. Let's see, is this, yeah, it's in there pretty good. Uh, let me get that all set up. Okay, I think we're gonna work here. I got this one on, I wanted to kind of practice before I showed you. And the only thing that, uh, you looks like we need to do is put a zip tie here at the top that little piece goes right in here so if you don't put a zip tie on it it wants to come back down because it's a little bit shorter but I think it's gonna work only time will tell when we start using the thing and uh, compressing the forks but we'll get the other one on now and I'll kind of show you what we go through So this is the part that the uh, zip tie goes around to hold it, keep it from falling or flipping over the top of that. So first thing we need to do is, is get in here and just make sure this is loose. 
and expand it a little bit. You may not have to do it on all of them, but I did on the other one. And you just start this in there, and then you get your your trim ring here on. And then you've got the rubber gasket. And then this piece right here that holds the, the ear just like that. And what you need is something. I, I knew this from my time with the 100 Yamaha Twin that something like this is going to make your life much easier and it's going to screw right into the top of where the bolt goes and you're going to pull that up and then into here and once you got that up you tighten your your nut Oops, I lost it a little bit. I'm gonna have to get a ladder here so I can hold it. All right, now get it pinched. Should stay then. Okay, so these are on hopefully right. I think I've got the everything the way it's supposed to be. And what I do is I just go ahead and pull this back up a little bit. And let me make sure you're in frame here. You see this has got a, a lip over it right here. So if you can just get in here. Kind of push up and get it up into that, that fold right there. There we go. And then get your zip tie. And you're just gonna go around the top portion of that. And then just pull it as tight as you can. Okay, so that should do it. And then what I do is I turn this around to the back where it's kind of underneath this piece, that way you don't see it. Go ahead and bring everything back in place here. And then you can bring this part back down, just like that. Okay, so that's, that's all good. Okay, I just made this tool, but if you don't have, um, I think I used half inch coal roll uh, and I just have, I've got a 10 millimeter die so I did that and just welded a T-handle on it. But if you don't have that, use your front axle. It's the same thread and you can stick a screwdriver in the top here to make it a, to make it a T-handle. I do enough of these. I really struggled with the YL 100 that I did so uh, I knew that I needed to do something Okay, so we've got these back in and now we can go ahead and Attach these And your bolts should pull the rest of this up now Just make sure everything's in line there and I'll go ahead and get this uh, one in the middle back in. 
I, you should be able to pull it up through here with your T-handle, but I was having trouble lining that up and this up and everything else up, so I just decided to do it uh, just a piece at a time. And so far it seems to be working out. Let's see, got my bolts here. Once you get the bolts in, then you can loosen your triple clamps, your pinch bolts, and go ahead and pull your forks into the upper triple. I think it's pretty close. I'm down on my nut in here. So let me pick up a couple wrenches here. Well, I may have it. Yeah, it's 17 for that one too, so we're good. All right. Okay, so we're tight there. And I'll just go ahead and loosen these up now. And then we should be able to pull everything right on up. Yeah, they were there anyway. All right. So that gets everything snug here. We may have to move, may have to loosen these a bit to get the headlight bucket in. You know, I'm, I think maybe I can go ahead and do that. Let me grab that and get the hardware. Okay, loosen that back up. I, I know I'm gonna have to do it, so I just figured I better go ahead and get it done. So we can go ahead and get our hardware here. That way we're only doing it once, hopefully. I think I can get everything loaded in the headlight without uh, any problem there. Okay. Now we can go ahead and torque these down. Those ears don't want to move once you, once these are tight. So there we are. Let's see what we need to do to get a wheel on now. Okay, I think before we get the fender on, or before we put the tire on, we got to get the fender on. I think this one may go on a little bit better because it doesn't have those big knobs on the side. Now, the, the only thing I did to the fender was the same as I did to the frame and that's just to uh, just give it a coat of wax automotive wax I just don't think there's a a reason really as a survivor <laughs> I keep using that term that we need to paint them they're not that bad and I think it, it'll just, the, the least amount of paint that you can do, the better off this whole thing is going to be. And we've got these little six millimeter bolts down here at the, at the support. I'm afraid if you paint very much, then you kind of change the whole image and that's not what we're wanting to do I, I painted some of the black parts but that's 
pretty much the extent of it. Now, we'll see here in a minute whether we can get that tire in there. Okay, it went in there. It, it still was, it still hit them, but you can kind of walk, rock it back and forth and get it to go. So I didn't have to let the air out. Let's see. I've got my spacer on this side and I'm lining up the uh, brake stay with the uh, brake cover on that side. And I'm just going to get a little bit of grease on the axle. Uh, always missing a rag when I need it. There we go. Okay, so this is the side the big part goes in. Probably would have helped if I had loosened that. Well, it is loose. Could be a little looser, I guess. All right. Now, I almost forgot to retighten these up here. So we'll go ahead and get those snugged up. Sure glad those threads were good. I think I can still get the fender on on the back. Let's see, we've got a nut over here. Where'd my oil go? Let's give it a little oil on the threads as usual. got to lock or pinch over here before we tighten that up. It'd be nice to clean those hubs up, but you know that's a lot of a lot of work pulling spokes off and redoing the wheel when it's in really good shape to start with. There was very little rust on the inside of them, only around the valve stem. All right. Let me jack that up a little bit and we'll see if it spins nice. And there you go. Looks pretty cool. And we've got our little cable guide here that goes here. Not sure how the orientation is. Probably like that. We can always change that. Okay. Okay, get our handlebars on. That's kind of my whole idea is to make this a roller. I was uh, kind of wanting to do another, work on a different bike to kind of um, change it up a little bit. But I just, I really need to be able to get this rolling so I can move it off the stand and put something else on here. So that's why I've kind of decided to do this one today. 
and I'm putting a little oil on my bolts as I go in. This is really a good thing on these because you're going into aluminum. And like I said, the metal rescue really helped for the um, the chrome. It really cleans them up nice. I think this was a a camper bike because it shows a lot of wear right here from looks like from putting straps on. The chrome's really thin, so it looks like it's been probably uh, hauled around more than it was ever ridden almost. That one's kind of hard going in. It's just hard. It's not nothing stripped or anything. Okay, I think that's about all we've got time for today, but I think we've made a lot of progress. And like I said, all, the only stuff I've painted has been the black parts and not all of them yet. Okay guys, there you have it. We've got the Trailmaster 100 kind of, well we've got it back as a roller and all we've done is uh, really just clean up, buff up, uh, plate a few parts, and clean the chrome parts in uh, Metal Rescue. Uh, it's just, it's coming along really nice. I was kind of worried about these. Uh, they are, like I said, I give you the part number. It's, uh, they're for the Honda S90, CL90, and a few others back from that time frame. So, there seems to be a lot of, a lot of good parts out there for Hondas. And, uh, you know, if we can use them on, on our bikes, man, that's great. Still looking for a Honda. I guess uh, the next time we're just gonna, we'll start where we left off here, start getting our brake levers on and uh, buttoning up the back. And we're probably, I should get that seal in this week. I think I saw the shipping uh, information come in on it. So it'll probably show up Monday or Tuesday. So we can get back on the engine and in pretty short order we ought to have this thing back together. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride and we'll see you next video.